Hey guys, what's going on? Today, I've got a special video for you all. I wanted to show you my Abarth 595. It's a very special car that I think you'll all enjoy. I definitely have. Now, it's been about a year now, and I've owned this thing for, well, a little longer than a year, actually. I passed my test in it, and it went great. Did all my lessons in it, and had a great time. Now, this car isn't exactly, well, normal. It's a bit of a special car, really. And it's a bit hard to tell you that in just a couple sentences. So I wanted to break this video up into a couple segments and show you what it's really like to live with an Abarth 595. As you'll probably have watched other videos about these cars, but not got that much insight to what it's actually like to have one of these cars. So let's get straight into it. I wanted to start off first with the aesthetics because honestly I think this car looks so so special it's so much different than your average Fiat 500 well actually it's not a Fiat 500 at all really it's a whole completely different car now what exactly are the changes you may be asking let's get right into that so to start off we're going to go around the front now obviously you get a really aggressive bumper and I mean this thing shouts menacing it's an absolute aggressive, angry little car. It's like a hamster on steroids, pretty much. I mean, this thing, it looks so amazing from the front. Every time I see one go past me, I think, wow, that thing looks pretty awesome. So what exactly is going on at the front, really? I mean, to start off with, you cannot mistake the amazing looking larger bath badge on the front. I mean, you can't really mistake it for anything else, can you? And through the rest of the bumper, you've got some very nice little details. I mean, I, like, I really like the chrome above here. I think that suits really nicely. But I'm thinking of getting carbon fiber for it. I don't know. Let me, let me know in the comments below, guys, because I'm a bit stuck on that. I don't know whether to keep the chrome or go for a full carbon fiber effect. Either one's pretty cool, since they look thick either way. And uh, we've also got a custom plate for the car because if you're driving one of these you need one on it i mean a sea plate fits this car so well especially if you're getting tailgated by a bmw or something you can just put your foot down and they'll read the plate and weep and underneath that plate we have an, another nice little lettering in the uh, in the honeycomb mesh here now a good tip that i wanted to tell you guys is that if you do own one of these the white lettering won't actually be on it, it'll just be black, which you can see, but it's not as vibrant, I want to say. So a tip that I want to tell you guys is to pop down to your local Halfords or something, buy some paint. I use tire text from a pen and that worked quite well. And it just looks 10 times better, especially because I do have white accents in the car. It makes it look so much better in white, but it's your preference really to whatever color you want to put it as. Now, uh, you also do get this very nice vent here, which I, which I think is pretty awesome. It does actually help with the car's uh, power and efficiency because all the air goes through there and yada yada, you probably know. And you also get this uh, very nice little splitter here, which goes along with the rest of the uh, aggressive little front end here, which I really love. I mean, this car from the front, honestly, guys, I can't tell you enough how great this looks. I mean, moving on to the bonnet here, nothing special, you know, just a nice bonnet. But you do get this little, like, uh, this little shape here, little line, little dent in the bonnet, which I think looks great. A little, uh, I don't know what to call it, really, a little ridge, little insert. But either way, it looks great. Reminds me of a uh, an E-Class Coupe, uh, Mercedes. They have uh, two in the bonnet, I think which is really good. So it's like I've got a mini little E-Class, which is nice. Uh, moving on to the side here, um, we have this great looking stripe, which I have added myself because it uh, didn't come with it as standard. But every above you see has stripes, looks amazing. So I thought I'd get it, because why not? I mean, it makes the car look 10 times sportier. And when you see it, it just looks really cool. So I thought, why not? It was very cheap, very easy to do. And now, it, it looks great. I mean, I want to say uh, a thanks to my, my dad for that, actually, because he helped me put that on. So uh, props to him, because now it looks stock. It looks like it came with it stock. All thanks to his magic wizardry of putting on stripes and all that. Uh, we get these nice little, uh, almost like Pagani Hawaii wing mirrors. 
they look really nice actually i really like the shape of them the black accent there and the paint there going to black again i think that looks great and uh coming down to the bottom here you get this nice side skirt very sporty very aggressive i think that looks really great nice little touch there as uh now it makes the car look even better along with the rest of the body kit we're moving up a bit you also get these really nice badges which again you can't mistake for what the car is because i mean come on look at it it's an above 595 what else do you need to know that's that's all there is really to know now moving to the back this is where the car shines i mean guys take a look at that it looks so good i mean there's so much to go through so let's let's get started here now of course like any other hot hatch you need a wing if you don't have a wing what's the point i mean look at it the way this wing sweeps up and goes across like that it's big as well it's a wing guys it's a wing and a nice wing at that i love the little indent here the line that goes across really nice also i'm sorry guys for the dirt it is a bit dirty but it is winter you know you can't really help it it is just what it is now rest of the back here I, I love this little aluminium chrome piece here with the badge on it i think that looks great that's really nice and of course again another abarth badge to tell you this is what it is you cannot mistake this car guys what else is it you cannot mistake it for anything else but i do like these little uh, lines here and with the black as well i think that looks great uh moving on as well this is the facelift car i did get it on the facelift it's a 16 plate uh, going on a 17 but i got it with the facelift parts which is great and uh sorry guys as well for the noise i'm near a motorway f i believe so it's it's a bit noisy with the cars but hopefully you can hear me all right but yeah uh moving on we do get the lights again and uh of course the plate read it and weep coming down here we get these nice little uh well standard you know reflectors we also get this lovely little uh little vent here which is real does work no fakery going on and uh moving down here we get this amazing looking fuse try and catch up for you guys <laughs> i think that looks great very aggressive I'll just try and move my shadow up there there we go i think that looks fantastic with the little honeycomb mesh there i think that looks really nice with the little uh extra bits on the diffuser very aggressive and to be honest it really makes the back of this car especially with this little uh this little black black lip here gonna can see that i think that looks really nice you can get those in different colors as well but i came in black i left it in black because it looks really good so i kept it now moving on to these bad boys uh these aren't stock this is one of a few modifications i've done to this car and it's a uh, it's a straight pipe exhaust toyo sports exhaust i believe this thing sounds incredible guys i cannot tell you enough how amazing this car sounds modded or stock the stock exhaust is nice it does have a really nice deep grumbly tone definitely lets you know it's a hot hatch but i feel like if you do own one of these cars you've got to get something a bit noisier you know just something a bit better this pops and bangs as well does a massive bang at 4000 rpm lovely stuff sounds great when you put your foot down see it there's the other one there and uh i don't have a stick with me right now guys so i can't do the car wow stick of truth test but uh, guys these are definitely real no fakery going on there we can't have fake exhaust on a car like this that's for sure right uh sorry about that and uh moving on again to the side uh now we have done the side but i wanted to address the wheels as um these are 17 inch wheels i think look great in this color as well graphite gray quite a hard color to get for these wheels actually you do get multiple different variants of the wheels uh like different shapes sizes actually i don't know about size i think they might just stay on the 17 but either way I think these are my favourite wheel out of the lot because the, the higher up models get the better wheels and they're very expensive to buy second hand so yeah these are my favourite. I love the the little uh, indents there, the ridges going in, remind me of uh, OZ wheels which I thought they were when I picked it up but it's not, it's stock wheels and they're remind me of Compa Motors as well, very nice and I love this uh, centre cap here with the scorpion on it, that's a really nice touch. And uh, I love the whole wheel, guys, really. But to accompany these wheels, we do have a full set of Pirelli P7s. Fantastic car. Well, I'm sorry. Fantastic tyre, guys, to go on the car. These are really nice ride. 
whenever you're using the car these tires accompany this car really well and I just think it's just a match made in heaven really I mean these wheels with these tires on this car it's great it's absolutely great now oh I did forget to mention as well we've got a lovely little uh, vent here which does work as well it's real all the vents on this car are real because why would they be fake it's a performance car it's a hot hatch it's all got to be real guys no fakery going on here right so that's the aesthetics of the car and uh, I think you've got to agree with me it looks fantastic now let's move on to the interior because there's also quite a nice little bit to go on here so let's uh, sit in here all right so guys you join me in the Abarth 595 sorry it's a bit squished uh, camera's not really getting much of it but still so let's start off with the steering wheel you get this lovely steering wheel which I think looks absolutely great you get these little different materials on it which I think was nice I personally have uh, changed the, some of the steering wheel I've put carbon fiber on the wheel uh, it is a wrap but I believe it it looks as good as the real thing so it's all right underneath this would be a like a chrome insert which still looks great as well so you can see down here we get here and uh, around the edges of the ring here again a bath logo you can't go wrong with it and uh, nice uh, little accents there in like a gloss black these would be in carbon fiber if you did get the higher up models but uh, I, I don't I like it as it is guys I think it's quite nice just as is and uh, oh yeah carbon fiber again down here I think it's a great touch again thanks dad for that I think it looks amazing and uh, just look at that guys look at the detail on that carbon fiber it looks fantastic so yeah that's the wheel and uh, moving on to the dashboard here um, so as you see dashboard is actually the same color as the car now uh, my car is in podium blue which is a bit of a limited color uh, is an option color so you do get the dashboard with it in that same color which i think looks great pops in the sun oh lovely stuff now uh, on the dashboard you get oh, oh, oh this button here now this this is the daddy of all buttons i'm telling you that much when you press this all hell lets loose and this car shows its true colors guys but i'll we'll save that for another video for another day now uh, of course you've got your hazard lights as well and yeah your lights your fogs She's, uh, and just like, like a radio really like any other car does but um it's really nice i like it runs you connect but the services are actually expired now so uh yeah not really much point in that but uh you know it just just works like a normal radio not much to show nothing special there so you know four inch touchscreen it is nice to have though but if you do have a later model say like a, a 2018 one you do get a seven inch touchscreen which is a lot nicer and you do get navigation I missed out on navigation by a month, which I'm ashamed that, I, well not ashamed actually, but um, it's sad that I didn't get that, but it's all right. Just whack a phone holder and get Google Maps on. There you go, Bob's your uncle. Now moving up to the top here, we have this awesome turbo bar or turbo gauge if you want to call it. I absolutely love this thing. So good to look at when you're driving, it just looks so sick. And uh, I've also added a little scorpion on top of here, because why not? You've got to add something at least. Make the car a bit of a, give it a bit more character, shall we say. And I think that looks good as well. Just a bit of blue tack, stuck it on. There you go. Now, I'm thinking of wrapping the uh, the top of this turbo bar, the cover in carbon fiber. But uh, let me go. No, guys, what do you think? I think that would look pretty cool, but I'm just going to keep it as is for now. And uh, moving to the top of the wheel, you get this really nice leather binnacle which uh, you can get in different colours for the stitching, or you can wrap it in carbon, but uh, I just kept it as is. I think it looks great. It's a nice little uh, addition to the car, and, you know, it, it, it kind of, like, lets you know you're driving something special, you know, instead of just all plastic and all that. <laughs> Moving here, you, oh, through the wheel, get uh, more of this dashboard here, and then you also get a digital dashboard, which uh, houses a lot of different uh, bits and pieces to let you know what you're doing, your speed, MPG, all that business. And then coming over to here, uh, this is my uh, modified gear stick, but usually you'd get a full leather, um, like a big bit of a chunky leather gear stick, which uh, it was really nice, really good to shift with, but I found it was a bit too heavy. So I've actually uh, swapped it out here for a, uh, a half, like a racing 
you know, sporty car type gear shifter, which actually works a lot better. As you can see, it's a lot lighter, a lot easier to use. I've also wrapped it in calm fiber because guys, you need a good shifter. The better the shifter, the better the drive and the more fun you get. But obviously the, amount, the most fun comes out of that little bad boy right there. But um, coming down, you've also got a leather gear gator, which I loved and kept in the same color. And uh, moving on, you also get this really nice uh, handbrake here and this nice material, feels great with this button too. Really nice little touches. And then down here you've got your aux cord and your holders. And some really nice bath mats, really match this car really well. Uh, I also bought these, so you don't get these as standard, but you get something similar to it. But I do recommend buying these from your local bath slash Fiat dealership. Not too much, 60 quid, 70 quid. It's a good buy, to be honest. It, it really makes this car shine. And uh, obviously you've got your glove box there, all that stuff. Uh, nice uh, door cards, not bad. They're a little, you know, itchy and scratchy, but they do the job. You also get, you also get this uh, nice aluminium door handle, and then these seats. Now these seats are standard seats that you get on most of baths, and uh, they're quite nice. I enjoy them. They're nice sitting. They're comfortable. They hold you well, and uh, you get this nice like split material in the uh, in the seat. You get a nice Alcantara at the top with the Abarth logo put into there. That's very nice aluminium. And then it's nice uh, stitch material, so it's very great, very nice. And the back here, uh, it is a four-seater, no fifth seat, as, a, well, it's only a two-door, so you don't get five seats. But it houses four people very nicely, it does the job well, and yeah. I mean, if you want to use it as an everyday car, it's great. You can hold a lot of stuff in the back seats, uh, which we'll get to in a minute. I'll show you the boot for practicality. But yeah, there's also some seat covers there. I bought them from Amazon, very cheap, nice little addition. But yeah, guys, that is pretty much the interior of the car. I'll just quickly show you, uh, is the, uh, the key for the car, which is a key case cover that I bought as a mod, but we'll get into that in another video, along with some more accessories and uh, cheeky Tudor there. Love this watch as well, but enough about the watch. Let's just show you what the key can do. So put this in there, start it up. There's your nice little startup screen there. I think that's a wonderful little, little animation you get when you turn on the car. Let's just turn it on real quick. Oh yes, guys, this is the absolute best thing to do in this car. Starting it up is, it's like music to my ears hearing this thing start up. Now uh, just make sure in neutral, give you a couple revs. And uh, this is what it sounds like in comfort. Put the window down there. Sounds great in comfort, but if you put it into sport mode, you get a new different dashboard, which looks great. I really like this sport dash and display. It looks awesome. Let's show you what it's like. Sport. Sounds great, honestly. This car sounds great in any mode you put it in. So uh, let's just uh, show you what you get here. You do get your trip information, different trips, you know, what you've done, and then your tires. Now, uh, one, one thing about this is that you don't actually get your information that well on the tires. Uh, it just says okay. But hey, if they're okay, then they're okay. Take, take the car's word for it. So yeah, guys, that is pretty much the interior. Now let's just take you to the back here. Show you what it's like around the back. What it sounds like from the back here. Whoa. Give it a bit of sound, guys. Oh, yes. Look. Thank you very much there. That's my uh, that's my dad with his uh, amazing Ecos over there. Don't know if you can see that. Looks amazing. That was the one I was on about earlier. Looks fantastic. And yeah, that that is what it sounds like from the back. Obviously, if you're hearing that on the road, 
yeah, you'll know something special's coming. Let's just uh, turn that off here. Right then, guys. Now, obviously, we want to know what it's like every day to drive. So what's the practicality like on this car? Let's get straight into it. So here we are guys in the boot of the Abarth 595 and it's pretty good actually. I would uh, I would say this is a very good boot to use for every day, you know, shopping and all that. Though if you buy one of these cars, are you really going shopping that much in it? But I mean, it is, it's what you want really. It's, it's a great little car. I mean, it's based on the Fiat 500 in a way, storage wise. So you can get a lot, a lot in it. I mean, you can also just uh, do the seats here guys. With the seats down, you can get quite a lot into it, you know, take out the uh, parcel shelf as well. It's a great car for storage, you know, if you want to get anything big in the back, you know, if you want to store stuff, it's great. It's a great little car for doing that. And obviously, you can, uh, you can get whatever you like in here, really. Space-wise, it's fantastic. So, what else about this car is really practical? Let's get straight. So guys, the seat space in the back is actually really good. I think it's all right. I mean, I haven't sat in the back of this car a lot because, well, I'm always in the driver's seat because why wouldn't I be? But the space in the back of here is really good if you want to put four people in it. Now, depending on the size of the people, that's, well, that's going to maybe vary depending on who you have in the car and that might deter the space or limit the space you have. But overall, usually, it's pretty good. It doesn't really matter. I mean, you can pull the seat forward and backward and obviously, you know, mess around with it a bit. But overall, just as normal, I think it's a good little car for getting people in the back of it. Now, guys, in terms of your glove box space and uh, your little compartments and all that, it's good. It's good, actually. I haven't really taken that much stuff in the car, but you've got two cup holders in the back there, two cup holders here, which work well. They secure the drink quite nicely. You've got these big door bins, which help with uh, anything you need, but more or less paperwork, I'd say. I don't think you'll get bottles in there, really. But, uh, sorry, it's a bit messy. I've just got some stuff in there for cleaning and... Uh, some little documents but yeah we've got uh, all the stuff in here you can get quite a few fair bit in there and it's all right so guys the one thing we didn't really get into is the performance now this engine as i've said is a little monster and it's got quite a lot packed into it really you wouldn't really think when you open this bonnet that all this would be under there but well if they can do it they can do it and they have so what exactly is it it's a little 1.4 turbo with uh, running a little garret down there somewhere, right there actually. And it's um, it's got quite a lot of power actually. Usually it would have 145 horsepower, but I've modded it because why wouldn't I? And it's now running actually 200 horsepower from a stage two tune, k and air filter, the straight pipe, and a few little other bits. Very easy and very cheap actually to do. So um, I actually enjoyed the process of doing it as well. I would have thought it would be a bit of a bit of a tedious process, but it was quite fun actually. And so uh, yeah, that is pretty much all you need to know about the engine. I don't really want to bore you guys about statistics, but I, I will tell you is that higher models get higher power. So that's all you really need to know. So guys, what you really want to know is the goods and bads. Because if you want one of these, you're going to want to know the main reasons on why to buy one or why not to. Now obviously, surrounding fear is the image of breaking down and repairs. But I want to actually tell you guys, it's a bit of a myth. I've only had one problem with this car, and it's the battery. Now you'll know if the battery's gone, because the dashboard will light up like a Christmas tree. And you may worry, you may start to think that the car's dead, but it's actually not. It's only dead in the battery. So just change it, get one, and then you're sorted. Very easy to do, you know, cheap to do. Just go down to your local garage or, you know, your little battery shop. Buy one, stick it in, you're all good. Bob's your uncle. Now, the only other problem with this car is the other repairs, such as the lower control arm. This is one of the main bad points. Now, if you do want to do something like that, and you do need to do your lower control arm, it's quite tedious, it's very annoying. You have to take off the front bumper, do some of the bolts and bits, take off the uh, the side the side vents and the, the side air filters, just to get to one bolt to take the lower control arm off, which I would recommend probably taking it to your specialist or the Abarth dealership themselves and hoping they can do it for you. 
apart from that everything else is fantastic i love this car personally i mean we'll go over the mpg figures and the fuel and the costs in another video because obviously we'll probably do a little series on how i got this car and how it is to run but overall through my one year ownership i've absolutely enjoyed this car it's it's perfect it's absolutely amazing cheap to run and uh cheap to maintain really but pretty much we'll go through mods in another video as well i'll tell you how i've done them what you can do what not to do but apart from that guys that's pretty much it of my uh, my one year ownership review of this car this was more like a review of the actual car itself and um if i have missed anything guys please feel free to put it in the comments because obviously your feedback matters a lot of the time but overall i just wanted to tell you and review this car really because in terms of my ownership i've absolutely loved it it's been a fantastic cracking car fast agile and just an overall bundle of fun for not even that much of the price it's a bit of a gem really on the hatchback market and a proper hot hatch to buy as well so if you're thinking of getting one i would recommend this car i think it's well as i've said it it's fantastic i don't know how many more times i can keep saying that guys it's a fantastic little car so that's pretty much it everyone i do hope you enjoyed this video and uh there will be more videos in the future about this car as i've said mods breakdown on costs but for now, that's it. I hope you enjoyed. If you do want to see more content, subscribe, like, hit that bell, and I will try and deliver it to you as quick as possible because I want to show you more of this car, guys. I've loved it, and I think you'll love it too. So I'll see you in the future, guys. Have a good one, and see you later.